it's lovely to see you on our second day of our conference. Uh, as Warren said, great day uh, yesterday, uh, a wonderful start, and let's hope for God's blessing uh, for today as well. I want to uh, read one of my favourite psalms, or certainly part of it, uh, and then just, just leave it and pause for a moment before I, I move on uh, to speak, because I think that the psalm and the words of the psalm really do speak for themselves, and, uh, and there'll be words that you're very familiar with. Uh, we had Psalm 23 yesterday, and a wonderful insight into Psalm 23. Um, but today I want to read Psalm 131, um, and um, certainly uh, partway through that psalm. So Psalm 131. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle in the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light for you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them is yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Just pause for a moment and reflect upon those very powerful words of that psalm, which remind us of a God that, yes, is inescapable, and that can be daunting in some ways, but a God who completely and utterly knows us, knows our every thought, our every breath, our every move, our every heartbeat, and is concerned for us. So as we just hold those thoughts, I want to read um, a very short verse or two from Matthew 10, 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. I always find it fascinating at the beginning of any season within the football world um, when people are announcing the squad numbers. Now, we've got uh, in Manchester United a certain member of the team and a squad number that is more popular than anything else and uh, certainly sells an awful lot of shirts. That's not quite the case at Bolton Wanderers. 
But it's quite interesting at the beginning of the season, before people get to know the players, they tend to shout out the squad numbers. So it's like, oh, number six looks sharp. Number eight, he's a good player. Uh, number 17's doing well. Why on earth they brought number 21 on? Why on earth didn't they take number 28 off? And so it goes on, all that kind of banter. And certainly last night, because we had a, a few new players who were just playing perhaps for the first time in the in the in the first team because of the Papa John's trophy, then a lot of people were shouting out the squad numbers rather than the player. But of course, as time goes on, um, people get to know the players. They get to know their strengths and they get to know their weaknesses. They get to know uh, their likes and their dislikes. And I guess that like many football clubs within our uh, uh, program, our match day program, we do a, a profile on players as the season goes on. And then there's a question and answer. Of what's the favourite food? What's the favourite music? Where they like to go out and all that kind of thing. So people get to know a little bit more about them. And of course, the reality is that um, every player um, and every person in sport who's got a number is actually more than a number. And as time goes on, we get to know that there's more to it than just a squad number. And as chaplains, we know that each individual and within the context of football is either a son, a dad, an uncle, a brother, a friend, and they've got their own personal story. It's not just about the number. We're reminded in Matthew about not one sparrow falls without the father knowing, and the fact that even the hairs on our head are counted. As I look round the screen today, I can see that God's got quite an easy job on his hands in some cases, um, and I certainly decided to make it fairly easy for him. Um, perhaps that's why he calls us to chaplaincy, because it just makes it an easier job. Over the last 18 months, um, we've heard a lot about numbers. Chris Whitty's next slide, please, and the Downing Street briefings have all been about numbers, daily infection rates, um, the daily stats on hospitalisation, and the daily stats on the number of people that have died uh, due to the pandemic. But of course, what we know as those that minister, that actually behind every statistic, uh, there is an individual and there is a person, there is a loved one. Uh, Warren shared very movingly yesterday about the loss of his mum and the impact that has on the family and what a wonderful, wonderful person his mum was that one individual and the impact that she had made on so many other people. And I'm sure that you have had to minister in really difficult circumstances over the last 18 months when you may have been conducting services where uh, nobody can go or very few people can attend. Or maybe having to conduct a funeral just round the back of a hearse and then see the hearse drive off into the distance with nobody else being able to attend uh, and go to the crematorium. We've also heard through the statistics about the number of older people that have died, as if that was somehow acceptable and that the volume of deaths within care homes was acceptable. Or, well, it's because it's for older people as if we can dismiss statistics in that way. Of course, the reality is that if we continue thinking of people in terms of groups and in terms of statistics and in terms of numbers, then that can actually lead to significant discrimination. And we can see that again building up in society, sadly. Within football, we see uh, the number of racist chants and attacks on black players we've had two players who have been really impacted at Bolton recently and I just know from sharing with them and 
talking to them and holding them in prayer, what an impact that has had, not just on them, but upon their mum and dads, their families and their kids. Numbers and stats in sports, we can all get caught up in. We also can get caught up in numbers and stats within churches. We all can get caught up in congregation sizes. I just find it fascinating how many people must count the feet of the congregation rather than the heads when they talk about the numbers that they've had on a Sunday. But the reality is the only number that really matters is the number one. Because in Psalm 39, we're reminded of a God who searches you, knows you, knows you intimately, knows you completely, knows your every move. And it's the number one that is the most important number. In the parables, we see that over and over again. The parable of the lost sheep, that one sheep that matters. The parable of the coins, the parable of the mustard seed, the tiniest one seed that then grows into that incredible tree and makes all that impact. And when I think about chaplaincy, really it is about just the number one. Because actually, being fit to serve, what does that mean? It means that we're caring for that individual that needs us at that moment. It means that we're caring for and holding in our prayers, in our thoughts, that one who needs that word at that moment. So the chat on the corridor the chat at pitch side or track side, the text that we send, the prayer that we offer, the arm round the shoulder, to that individual at that moment is the most important thing because we are holding that person where they need to be. And of course, that's the power of one. Because at that moment, that's all that matters. It's all that matters, should matter to us and all that should matter to them at that moment as we hold them in our prayers. The power of God and the power of Jesus is that he loves us completely. He loves you individually, completely. And he wants the best for you individually and completely. He wants you to realize your potential. He wants you to be the best chaplain that he's called you to be. And in order for us to fulfill that, we need to remember the importance of one. That one person, that one individual that we're ministering to at that moment. Remembering that they're not a number, they are a human being. They are God's child who needs our care, our love and attention at that moment. So we've lived in a world of statistics. We've lived in a world of numbers. But thank you, God, for the very fact that you care for us individually and know us completely and want us to walk alongside those within our care and to hold them and know them too. Amen. Let's just um, have a, a moment of quiet and then a moment of prayer and give thanks to God for the fact that he knows us completely. Loving God, we thank you for the very fact that 
you are a God who wonderfully knows each individual. The fact that you know us completely. We thank you that in Jesus Christ, you prove to us over and over again how much you loved us, how much you care for us, and how far you are prepared to go to show that love. We thank you that we can begin this day knowing that you are besides us, and that whatever we face, whatever challenges lie ahead, you are there, you are ahead, and you already know it completely. We thank you too for the wonderful privilege of being called to this ministry of chaplaincy in sport. We thank you that you have blessed us and given us that calling. Help us to be the best that we can be in what we do and what we offer. By holding on to the fact that we need to care for each and every one individually and carefully consider each person. Getting to know their, their needs, their concerns, their anxieties what it is about them that makes them tick. But remember all those who have lost loved ones in recent days and how important that loved one is to their lives and the impact of their loss that it has made upon them and their family. Be with us, Lord during this day, bless us with your Holy Spirit and give us the wisdom to seek to serve you in better ways and to be fit to serve you in all that we do and through all that we are. This we pray in the life-giving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, thank you. Be blessed. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for that uh, devotion. Uh, just starting the day off right. I love that we are more than a statistic, more than a number. And really come that we serve a nurturing God who loves us and cares for us so much. Uh, just before we go, I, I think it's great, just as we've done that devotion, that even when we pause in the busyness of life, God speaks to each one of us. So... I just want to pause before we rush into the next bit. So often we think the devotion is nice and then we rush into the rest of the, the uh, conference. But I really sense God saying to pause. Uh, just as we reflect, we talked a lot, a lot about yesterday about reflecting. And part of reflecting is that we can be grateful for what's taken place, but we don't stay in that place of in the past, but we look forward to what God's going to do in and through us. And so I, I just want us to pause and reflect. It might have been the scripture. It might have been God might have, you might have recalled a person. You know, it, every time someone mentions my mum and you think you're over stuff and it, it hits you in, 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 a, in a nice way and sometimes, and sometimes it, it's a sad way, but is it something God's just recalling you from the last 18 months that you can be grateful to God for, which you can take forward in the future? There's a great saying someone said yesterday. Uh, and I can't remember who it's by. It, it's not what you say. It's not how you say it. People re won't remember that. People remember how you made them feel. And as sports chaplains and as people of uh, men and women of God, it's not always what we say. It's what we carry, what we, we speak over someone's life, the, the nurturing, the caring for that one, as Phil so eloquently described. So I just want us to pause for one minute to, to reflect and be grateful for. Maybe God will remind you of something you've forgotten even or pushed aside because uh, I really believe God wants to do a sense of uh, healing as well as we move and reflect so let's just pause for a moment and allow God to speak into each one of our lives in a in a direct way
you know, silence is difficult sometimes on, on these uh, meetings, but I just want to say, and I know Adam mentioned this yesterday, one of my favourite statements is by Zig Ziglar, it says this, small things done consistently creates massive change. Those small seeds, as, as Phil spoke about, the mustard seed, the, the, the gesture of kindness, the willing willingness to notice someone's not okay and ask the question, the willingness to pray for someone, the willingness to be vulnerable, the willingness to hold out your hand in friendship when other people have maybe pushed it away. So as chaplains, I want to encourage us as we lean in today for the rest of the day to hear about the nurturing hope of the God we serve, to hear about people who've demonstrated resilience beyond sometimes what we would even think is imaginable. We just want to say thank you, God, that you do care for us, that your scripture talks about you're a caring God that nurtures us as individuals. I'm just